Oh, yeah, Wednesday, and we have got a great work for, workout for you today on Hump Day, and uh, we're going to get right after it today. Today, we've got a warm-up. You're going to be doing one minute of each station, and we're going to go through this two times. So the first thing we're going to start out with is 10 high knees and 10 butt kickers, then going into T-bones, then plank to push-ups, and finishing up with curtsy lunges. Then rest for a second, get a little stretch in, and go through it again. On the high knees and butt kickers, you're going to do 10 and then 10, and keep alternating back and forth for the entire minute. So stay in that high knee position and get those knees up. Just count that right leg each time, because you're going to do right plus left equals 1, and then you're going to switch to the butt kickers for 10. And then we'll go back to the high knees for 10, and then back to the butt kickers for 10. Uh, then we're going to do T-bones. Uh, this is a great core exercise. If you can, keep your hands out in your, at your sides. If you need to, you can put them under your butt. And kind of like a flutter kick, you're just going up about six inches, out, together, and then down. And just keep that motion going. Short tap on the ground. If you need to... Uh, rest for a second, bring your knees into your chest versus letting those heels stay on the ground for more than a second. After that, we're going to do plank to push-ups. So start in that plank position, torso straight, go up to the push-up position, and then back down to the plank. And just keep alternating that position for the entire minute. And then we'll finish up with those curtsy lunges, get those hips opened up, where you're bringing your right leg behind your left all the way to the knee, and then switch legs each time back and forth here. So uh, again, one minute at each station, a total of two rounds, uh, high knees and butt kickers, T-bones, plank to push-ups, and then curtsy lunge. Then for strength today, we have got seven sets of a pause front squat. So if you're using that barbell, whether you need to clean it up or you've got a rack to do it on, you're going to be in that good rack position, elbows up, get below parallel, three, two, one, and then drive right out of it. Three, two, one, right out of it. Make sure you're getting that three-second pause every single time. If you're using lighter weight, you can increase the number of reps but make sure you stick with that pause. If you're using a, a dumbbell or a kettlebell, again, you can stay in that rack position, get right down, three, two, one, and then right up. Um, again, you choose the reps based on the weight. If you see it, seven sets, and you'll do either three, six, or nine reps, depending on the weight you have. If you've got plenty of weight, stick with the threes. If you're doing lighter, then definitely go up in the reps so you really get something out of this. After the strength today, make sure you get about a two-minute plus uh, rest in between each set. I think one of the biggest things that happen, especially when you are doing this from home, is it gets really easy to fly through it, and you're going to build a lot more strength a lot faster and better by taking that rest, recovering, and making sure you're putting your effort into each set that you're performing. After the strength, the workout today is a 15-minute AMRAP, so as many rounds as possible in 15 minutes of 10 kettlebell swings, 10 box jumps or tuck jumps, and then 10 ring dips or bench dips. So on the kettlebell swing, if you've got a kettlebell, go for it. Use that kettlebell. Make sure you're getting those hips open and getting that big hip pop. Keep that chest up, big pop overhead, and keep that motion going for the 10. This is a good rep amount to really focus on getting uh, going all 10 reps unbroken. If you need to, you can always use a dumbbell and hold it at the head and get that same motion going for those kettlebell swings. Then for the box jumps, you're taking that jump and jumping right up on that box. Make sure that you have plenty of room for this. And make sure whatever box you're using 
is stable. Don't just grab something old and ratty out of the garage and say, okay, I'll jump up on this, and then the thing falls apart and everyone's upset with you. Make sure you use something that you know is going to support your weight. Get up there, soft landing, stand all the way up at the top, and either step back or jump back. If you don't have a box, you can just go with that same height and do that tuck jump and really make sure you've got a soft landing every single time. Uh, but really focus on that height, 20 to 24 inches, that you know is going to happen in that box jump. Then, either with a set of rings, you'll do those ring dips, or use a bench or that same box. Get nice and close to that bench, and make sure you're staying close to it. The further out you get, the more negative impact it's going to have on that shoulder joint, so the more you can stay nice and close and get those elbows to that 90 degree point, that's what we're looking for. So uh, as many rounds as possible in 15 minutes, 10 kettlebell swings, 10 box jumps or the tuck jump, and then 10 ring dips or the bench dip. So go hard, go fast, get those scores and be on the whiteboard. And guys, all the way around, keep up the great work. Keep encouraging each other. Uh, get on the virtual classes. You may not feel like you need them, but being able to be a part of them is just going to help everybody in the community get through this stronger, better than ever. And that's exactly what we want to see out of it. So uh, thanks a lot. If you need anything, let us know. We're here for you. And uh, we will see you tomorrow with another great workout.